You'll remember Sarah Monaghan as the delightful child star in Hey Dad. Today, she works in law enforcement in America. And tonight, Sarah launches a campaign to give Australian families the power to know the names and addresses, once they've served their time, of any convicted predator living in their suburb. It's law in the United States, but with the exception of Western Australia, Australian states make it all but impossible for parents to protect their kids. Tonight we'll be asking you to vote during our two-part special. It may be the most important vote you make this weekend. The details are on our website where you can click on view a vote or download the free app. And a warning, this powerful story has content which may not be suitable for children. Here's Darren Hitch. Two years ago, when I was under house arrest for outing two serial sex offenders, I heard from a brave mother. The law says she can't be identified, so we'll call her Angela. She sent me a note of support, a message from the heart, because she wanted to share something with me about the stepfather to her young daughter, the man she had loved and trusted, a man she never thought capable of such evil. I have heard of a phone call that you had with him yeah. and your, your, your strength and your bravery there was amazing because you were determined to get him to tell you the truth and get him to say, yes, I raped your daughter. Yeah. And he wouldn't, he, he kept lying, he wouldn't tell you. This is the actual phone call. I know when you're lying. You're wrong. Mm. And she's 11 years old. And I did not like her. You're going to rot in hell. And you know what? You deserve to. My daughter first said to me, you know, um, who's going to believe me? I'm just a kid. Well, <laughs> you watch me. For legal reasons, we've had to disguise Angela to hear her story. It begins on the night her daughter gave her a note. You, can you tell us what was in the note? Was it a lengthy note? I think she had meant a couple of pages. No, it was um, on, on three sticky notes. And she... <sighs> She said, Mum, I know why I've been funny around. And she said his name. And she said, I know you're going to like, you're not going to like hearing this, but I have to get this off my chest. And she said, Mum, he has been sticking his, and it was a picture of a penis, into my V. And then she said, and I'm really sorry, but Tom, um, I didn't let him do it. I just rolled over and pretended to be asleep. And that's when your world fell apart. Yeah. Angela told her de facto husband to get out. She rang the police. They got back to me and said, if you can set up a conversation and tape him, we'd be really appreciative. So, on the phone, late one night, Angela confronted him. Who would have thought that you would rape my daughter? I did not. I did not. I'm looking something. I'm not Please don't say it anymore. The call went on for more than 90 minutes. Then, finally, a confession. What did you do? I touched her. I don't know what. And I'll pay the price. I felt her. And I rubbed her. I touched her best. And I indifferently touched her. And you what? Who are you? Monster. And you, that if I could get him to confess, we had him. Um, and the very first person I rang after that, so I'm going to cry. <laughs> The law prevents me revealing his name, but the 54-year-old eventually pleaded guilty to raping and indecently assaulting Angela's daughter. Last year, he went to jail, a seven-year sentence, eligible for parole much sooner than that. Despite what this man inside here did to that young girl, he could be out in only two years, living back in your community, 
next to you and your kids, or near their school, or where they play. And you won't be permitted to know his name, what he looks like, where he works, or what he has done. Now, if this were in the United States, things would be very, very different. I mean, it's great that they have here resources so that parents can look up where convicted sex offenders are, where child sex offenders are, and it makes for a safer community. Here's the first, first ads for Hey Dad. Brand Sarah Monaghan's accent has changed, but the face should be familiar. It says uh, Wednesday, February 11th of 1987. 87. It's a long time ago. Yeah. Sarah was 10 years old when filming began on the popular TV comedy Hey Dad. Robert Hughes played her on-screen father. Off-screen, it's alleged he molested her. Hughes goes to trial next year. I liked all the crew. The crew were all really nice people. 36-year-old Sarah now lives in San Antonio, Texas, where the fight against sexual predators is high-tech. It's as simple as downloading an app onto your mobile phone. So this app will show you where you are. And it is available to anyone, anywhere in America. So here's us, and you can see each one of these little black dots is a registered sex offender. So you can click on any one of them. So if we click that one, it brings up his name, a photo, a physical description, his actual address, and the charges. And this one is sexual assault of a child. It's incredible. There's absolutely nothing like this in Australia. Absolutely nothing like it. I know, and this is great, because we had an exchange student years ago, and she went to the school, the biggest school up the road, and we could just tell her, take this path, don't go next to these houses. I so wish that Australia would follow and implement something like this and stop being so scared of protecting criminals. I don't get why we're protecting criminals when we should be protecting the innocent children. Look at a very well-respected, ordinary... I know, everyone's lawns are manicured. It's obviously not in a bad neighbourhood. To prove her point, Sarah took us for a drive. So, so what does the app say? It says it's uh, 1109. Right, so it's going to be that one on the corner. Lovely corner house. This is where the predator she found on her phone actually lives. His name is Billy Joe Cooper, a convicted pedophile. He has been here for 13 years. The big issue, the big argument against, uh, is the vigilante issue. There's no such thing. I mean, honestly, there is no vigilanteism. Nobody goes to the neighbor's house. They just, they know it's a registered sex offender. They know he's not a great human that you should let your kids with. But they don't smash their windows. They don't, you know, pitchfork at their house. They don't spray paint. It's just, it's there. Just a regular house. Nobody out the front. I don't see any broken windows. Doesn't look like anybody's painted his house, graffitied it, tried to run him out. Just look at this. Even here, in the heart of New York, one of the busiest, most public places in the world, I can punch an app on my phone and find registered pedophiles within blocks of where I'm standing. And about an hour from here is the place where a seven-year-old girl was brutally raped and murdered. It was to be the start of America's all-out war on sex offenders. Megan was literally the poster child for Megan Slaw, but she was our child. Maureen and Richard Kanker have lived on this street in Hamilton, New Jersey, for nearly 35 years. You know, we purchased our home because it was a great neighborhood with families, with kids. We thought it was safe. And here we had not just one, but we had three sex offenders living across the street from our house, three. So up to that time, there was no public identification of convicted sex offenders? None. Jesse Timmendanquis was one of the three pedophiles living across the street from the Kankers. No one in the neighborhood knew of his history, that he had convictions for sexually assaulting two girls, five and seven years old. On Friday, July 29, 1994, this predator invited Megan into his house to see a puppy. When I think about her in that room by herself, nobody to help her. Yeah. And I live with that every day of my life. 
Kevin Dankris was arrested and confessed the next day. Police found Megan's body the day after. He told them that she cried for me, for her mom. She cried for her mother to help her, that I wasn't there. The murder shocked America into action. Within months, New Jersey became the first US state to establish a public register for convicted sex offenders. It was called Megan's Law. Then, on May 17, 1996, President Clinton made it a federal law. Today, America warns, if you dare to prey on our children, the law will follow you wherever you go, state to state, town to town. Did you feel in your heart for your little daughter, we've done something for you? My feeling was, you know, um, no one knew Megan like we did. And I'm going to get upset when I say this. You and me both. She was a phenomenal little girl. I had no doubt that this little girl, if she had lived to grow up, would have made some wonderful accomplishments in life. And to look at a little seven-year-old girl in death to do what she did is um, phenomenal, but not surprising for me. The house where Megan was murdered was later torn down and turned into a park. Richard and Maureen see it every day. They still live across the street. It's a whole different type of crime. And it's one that we have to start looking at in a different light. And maybe that's where Australia needs to be. They need to look at it in a different light and realize that what they're dealing with is, is very, very different. You're not talking about, you're talking about very wily people when it comes to children that are very smart. Cunning and cunning, patient. Cunning and patient. He watched my daughter for months out of his bedroom window. My daughter would play on my front porch and he said he watched her for months. And we had no clue there was a danger. He could be free in a very short time and, and with total anonymity, fade back into the community. Mm, I know. So how does that make you feel? Afraid for whoever he moves in next door to. Um, he will drag some other poor woman in and he will re-offend and... I have no doubt at all that that will happen. And there's no mechanism to protect us. And we'll have more of Darren Hinch's investigation in a moment. And a reminder, our viewer vote is underway. Our question, do you agree or disagree that Australia should have a national public register of convicted child sex offenders? You can have your say by going to the Sunday night website. We'll have more live results for you after the break. Plus, how one no-nonsense American sheriff is publicly shaming predators. I call them bottom feeders, or I just call them perverts. The sexual predator lives here. If you take the sign down, I'll put a bigger one up. It was about protecting our kids to make sure that we don't have one more victim. Viewer vote is now well and truly open after watching the first part of Darren Hinge's exclusive report. We're asking if you agree or disagree that Australia should have a national public register of convicted child sex offenders. Now here's part two of Darren Hinch's exclusive. In England, this predator is running from pedophile hunters. Do you want to know your side of the story? Opponents of public registers in Australia always raise the spectre of vigilantes. Reports of reprisals are rare in the US and the UK. But here, in the English Midlands, some parents have launched a website called Let's Go Hunting. They pose as young schoolgirls on the internet, lure men to parks like this one, confront them on camera, and then hand the results to police. How old is the person you've just decided to meet? Probably, or is? Careful, just stay back with you, please. Yes, she's 15. Let's Go Hunting surfaced earlier this year. It doesn't matter where you go, we already know where you live. The group, consisting of three fathers and one mother, declined our interview requests. They meet their targets online, and then confront them in person. Speak to you for a second. Don't worry, you're not under arrest. Oh. I just want to speak to you about the reasons you're here. Do you understand that you've not been speaking to a 14-year-old girl? 
You've actually been sought out by Peter Farmer, Hunters. Alright. Okay. Do you want to explain why you're here? It's all right. I just started chatting to one of them on online sort of thing. This middle-aged man came equipped with alcohol to ply his 14-year-old date with. Can you just show me what's in your yeah, pocket? Yeah, just a bottle of vodka. A bottle of vodka and, and some med ball. Yeah. You are now going to be reported for the offence of trying to meet up with an underage girl for sex. OK? She's 40 years younger than yourself, isn't she? You're 54 yeah. years old from Yeah, I just thought that she could have had the drink and then we could have had a chat. Uh, so far, there have been six arrests. But the public outing of these predators horrifies people like Brett Collins from the Australian group Justice Action. Should six offenders be publicly identified when they've done their time? No, they definitely should not be. That's, uh, that's, nothing could be worse than outing someone who's accused of such a, a high-profile... Uh, a murderer is, a tax offender is, a Darren Hinch is. Why should sex offenders be protected? Uh, because, uh, because we have an interest as a community to ensure that we have a, a, a community feeling safe and feeling and yeah, being that's secure. What, that's what I'm saying. Why should they not be identified? Uh, because you don't get safety um, by excluding people. You get safety by including people. Yeah, we, we call them rock spiders in Australia. I call them bottom feeders, or I just call them perverts. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. There ain't no beating around the bush. People that have that, they're, you can't fix it. Two hours north of Orlando is the town of Stark. Of the 5,500 people who live here, 18 are sexual predators. And their presence is impossible to miss. Sheriff Gordon Smith has made sure of that. See, because I'm telling you, if you love your kids, You'll do everything legally possible that you can within legal means to protect our kids. And that's what it was all about here in our community. It was about protecting our kids to make sure that we don't have one more victim. Earlier this year, the sheriff took Megan's law and gave it an old-fashioned makeover. Outside the home of every child molester in Stark sits a big red sign. There's the church right there. And I can see the sign just ahead there, that red sign, right? Right. That's Anthony Jones. Once a month, Lieutenant Dawn McKinley goes out to check on the signs. So people going to church on Sunday with their kids, they know that uh, next door... Absolutely. ..there's a sexual predator. Absolutely. Look at that. That really sums it up, doesn't it? Right. What's the reaction of the of the convict when when you rock up and uh, and stick a sign on his on his front lawn. I've had one or two that get mad. I really don't care. I honestly don't. Uh, you know what? So what if he has to live with it? The victim lives with it. If they don't like it, move. There's other counties that don't do it. You got an option here. Find you another place to live. For scores of American predators, that place is this caravan park on the outskirts of Orlando a place no parent would ever want to visit. I've campaigned against pedophiles for many years, seen and heard some shocking things, but this is a first. I'm about to get involved in something more distasteful than anything I could have imagined. I'm about to meet some convicted child molesters at a Florida caravan park they call home, along with more than 100 others. It goes by the pretty name of Lakeshore Village. And it would have to be the most dangerous place in the world for children. So this is actually like a, it's a whole little town. Yes, we have our own little village. We have off-duty sheriff that patrol the streets. And how many child molesters, how many of them live here? It changes from day to day or week to week, but like today we have about 108, 109. Laurie Nassifer bought it 30 years ago. And at one stage, nearly walked away from it. Three people, and it became overrun with uh, families and drug addicts and uh, prostitutes, and it was really in shambles. I was ready to close it down. And then somebody said, why don't you take in sex offenders? And that changed everything. The best tennis I've ever had. My name's William Clark Hutchinson. I was charged with lewd and lascivious actions. I'm Mike Miller. I was convicted of molesting a 15-year-old girl. My name's Scott. I've been convicted of sexual barrier on a child under 12. While filming, we attracted an audience. All were child molesters. And some wanted to talk to me. Florida has the toughest uh, laws uh, against sex offenders in oh, the United awful. States. They're awful. They really are. It, we never stop getting punished. 
Like everyone else in this village of the damned, William Clark Hutchinson finds it easier being amongst his own kind. I feel worse than uncomfortable. I feel I feel dirty. I feel terrible to be to be involved, be, be here. Can you understand that? Uh, actually, yes, I do. Do you understand the fear, though, that people think, well, maybe it would happen to do something so abominable once? The fear is there that maybe you could regress. It could happen. I mean, to say it's not going to happen would be a lie. You and I will never agree. I don't give a stuff about sexual offenders. I don't give a stuff how long their sentences and how long they're in there for because they have committed the most despicable crimes against children. Right. And you, you on the other side, think that they, they can all be re rehabilitated. And, and I wonder about your conscience when, when, when they do reoffend. Look, I, I, I just think it's so important that we actually see in everyone hope and, and we, we actually stand beside that person at the same time as keeping a, 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 an eye on the fact that they um, won't always succeed. In stark contrast in the town of Stark... You can see the sign right there. The overwhelming view is that nothing is more important than protecting children. The rights of predators come a distant second, even if that means a bright red sign. I, I made a promise with him. I said, look, the sign's out here. Your neighbours know who you are anyway. If you take the sign down, I'll put a bigger one up. You take the bigger one down, I'm going to roll that big message board that says flashing lights, and it's going to have an air that says sexual predator lives here. Now, we can make it as difficult or as hard as you want to. What if I told you that there are suppression orders in Australia where a person does his time as a sexual offender, he's then released. Uh, by law, his name cannot be made public, his photograph cannot be used, his address cannot be used, he goes back in the community so he can rehabilitate and nobody knows who he is or where he is. That's unexcusable. I don't know how anybody can justify that action. I'm still, I'm dumbfounded. When you talk about there's, they've been convicted. I mean, it's not like they've been charged or, or you know, it's no, not, being convicted, not accusations. They're not talking about accusations. You're talking about convicted. And, and these are serial offenders. These are repeat offenders. Move them next door to your judge. Put them, put them up next door to your judges. Put them up next door to your, your politicians and let them move in next to them and say, well, if you don't care, we're going to move them in next to you. Sarah Monaghan is embracing life. Her day job is working for the Texas State Guard. Her downtime is spent target shooting. And her passion is that Australia follow America's example and pass a national law making public the names and addresses of convicted pedophiles after they're released from jail. Now, people argue, of course, so do the crime, do the time. You've done your time. Why shouldn't they be left alone? Why should they be identified? I think because it's a sickness. So many of them go to prison, they get let out, they repeat. It's something that's like almost in their DNA that they just can't help themselves. So there has to be some way that if you can't stop them, that you have to at least warn everybody else what this person is capable of. Darren Hinch reporting. We'll have the full result of your vote next week and voting stays open until midnight.